Welcome back to HJEX Voice, our podcast series featuring insights from senior executives and industry experts on Hong Kong's financial markets. My name is Thomas Shum from Corporate Communications, and I will be your host today. HJEX has just announced a consultation paper on the reduction of minimum spreads in the Hong Kong equities market. The recommendations aim to lower overall trading transaction costs and boost liquidity in the market. A two-phase approach will be adopted to reduce minimum spreads of certain price bands by 50 to 60 percent, thereby helping with price discovery process and facilitating more trading trading activities. Joining us today is Brian Roberts, HKEX's Head of Equity Product Development, here to give us an insider's perspective on the consultation paper and how the enhancements will serve to enhance Hong Kong's market microstructure. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you, Thomas. It's a pleasure to be here today. So, Brian, HKEX has just published a new consultation paper on the proposed reduction of minimum spread in Hong Kong's securities market. Brian, could you explain to our listeners, perhaps in layman's terms, what exactly is a minimum spread? Yeah. You know, most people that trade a security on an exchange are familiar with the concept of the bid ask spread. And that is simply the difference between the best bid and ask price at the top of the order book. Now, the minimum spread sets the minimum incremental price movement up or down for a security traded on the exchange. Now, pulling this all together, the minimum spread is what determines how tight the best bid-ask spread can be. So the minimum spread, while it's a very nuanced topic and one that most people are not familiar with, it is a fundamental aspect of equity market structure. And from an exchange perspective, when we review uh, spread tables, right, we seek to find a balance between cost and liquidity. And this will be something mm-hmm. that we kind of talk about throughout uh, today's discussion. So what are the key highlights of the proposal? Yeah. So I'll highlight a few things here. I think first to start out is really the scope of securities. Uh, what is in scope in this uh, consultation to have uh, the minimum spreads uh, reduced is equity stocks, REITs, and equity warrants. Securities like exchange-traded products, structured products, and debt securities are out of scope for this consultation. The next thing that I'll mention, and you kind of mentioned it already in the, uh, in the introduction, is that the proposal to reduce minimum sp- spreads is between 50 to 60% in certain price ranges, right? So this is not something that we are proposing to do uh, uh, spread reductions across the board. The phase implementation, I think, is an important part. Um, The first phase is going to focus on those in-scope securities that are priced between $10 to $50, okay? The second phase, assuming the first phase uh, goes well, The second phase will focus more on the securities that are lower priced, priced between 50 cents and $10. The last thing I'll just kind of mention here is that the consultation is published. It is available on HKX's website. So we encourage all participants to respond during the consultation period, and that will close on the 20th of September. Um, So, And then at the end of it, by the end of this year, we target to publish those consultation conclusions with a path forward. Brian, perhaps I'll pick your brain here. Why exactly do we choose those exact price bands and what's the rationale behind that? Yeah. So every market's going to be a little bit different. Um, I think when we have done some early kind of market sounding with market participants on reducing the the minimum spreads, we really started to kind of hone in around a minimum spread cost between five to 10 basis points. And when you look at stocks that are priced above $50, their uh, already their minimum spread ranges are between five to 10 basis points. So we felt like those securities don't need to go through a reduction at this point. They are kind of what we would consider probably in that optimal spread range. Now, the first phase, the $10 to $50 uh, price range, when we reduce the minimum spreads by 50%, by 50%, that will actually bring their spread in terms of costs into that five to 10 basis point range. So now going forward, once phase one is introduced, any security price $10 and upwards will be in the minimum spread range of five to 10 basis points, okay? 
The second phase where you start to get into the more of the lower price securities, uh, we do find that there is an opportunity to bring those costs down. But the thing with those is, especially when you get down below $5, you can't necessarily bring their spread cost, that range, into 5 to 10 basis points. So we want to try to get it as close to 5 to 10 basis points as we can. But when you get closer, below $5 is not necessarily going to be possible. Mm, I see. So that's quite technical, and thank you for that. Um, so what are the key considerations when HKEX proposes this spread reduction? Yeah. You know, as, as I mentioned earlier, when we review minimum spreads, we seek to balance cost and liquidity. So here, what we're aiming to do is provide a marketplace where in investors can enter and exit positions efficiently at the best price and at the lowest cost possible. Mm -hmm. But this is a fine balance because if we set minimum spreads too large or too small, it could actually have a reverse effect on liquidity, meaning that liquidity is actually removed from the market. So while this is a technical subject, like you mentioned, it's a bit of like art and science when we mm. go and review uh, minimum spreads and, you know, put forward these kind of proposals. Obviously, in our consultation paper, we've um, done some research, obviously, around the subject. So how does our proposal compare with our peers in the international markets? I think when you look at how other exchanges set minimum spreads, there's a wide variety of models out there. Um, you know, we see some markets that have adopted what a, a standard increment of like one cent. So it doesn't matter what the price is, the minimum spread is going to be one cent. Um, other markets like Hong Kong have elected for, you know, uh, for multiple decades to adopt a single table model, which basically is a tiered model um, that as the prices increase, your minimum spread uh, in dollar terms would increase as well. And then other markets will actually use a multiple table model, right? And they use these different tables and they will apply them based on the liquidity profile of the underlying uh, asset. What this tells us is that basically there is no uniform consensus in how, mm. to, uh, how to determine and set minimum spreads. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, this is really a bit of art and science. You know, we need to understand our market structure, um, our investor behavior, and implement the best model for Hong Kong. And that's what we believe that we are doing with this uh, proposal. You know, and again, as I've mentioned, there is a trade-off between cost and liquidity. So in cash equities, I think Japan is a really good example of really um, successfully uh, reducing uh, minimum spreads, but they did so in a very gradual phase. So I think when we look at all of this, I think it's important that we pace ourselves as we change really this fundamental aspect of equity market structure. So again, that goes back to why we're looking to do this in a, in a phased approach. Okay, understood. And Brian, you were also involved in the ETF spread table adjustment exercise a few years ago. Have you, were there any takeaways or lessons that you learned uh, while doing that? And, and how, how have you applied those lessons here when we're proposing the reduction of minimum spreads in the securities market? Yeah. You know, while we haven't really changed our minimum spreads for cash equities in a number of years, um, but we have made changes to, um, to spreads in our market. And uh, like you mentioned, in, in 2020, we introduced a new uh, spread table for ETFs. And basically what we did at that time is we took our current cash equity spread table uh, and we reduce minimum spreads across all price bands by at least 50%, and some even as drastic as 90%. Um, we did this with the aim to create greater trading flexibility and lower transaction cost. What we generally observed was a broad reduction in trading, trading spreads, but the reduction was most significant and pronounced in the actively traded ETFs. So while we achieved our aim, I think it's also important to note that the reduction of minimum spreads for Hong Kong ETFs was also implemented in conjunction with an enhanced market making program, which also positively contributed to the improved liquidity and reduction in trading spreads. Brian, from your early discussions with market participants, what has been sort of the initial reaction to this proposal? Yeah. The Hong Kong equities market is it's really a 
diverse uh, ecosystem and we have um, a really balanced mix of investors. You see uh, institutional investors from all over the world. You see uh, market makers, retail investors from across the region. Um, and they all exhibit very discrete and distinct like trading strategies and behavior linked to the minimum spread. Now, the consultation is still ongoing, but we have had some initial discussions with market participants and feedback has been broadly supportive and a and this is viewed as a welcomed proposal to reduce minimum spreads. So again, this consultation is still ongoing, but we will continue to actively engage market participants during this period. And we encourage all participants to formally respond by the 20th of September. And looking back at the big picture, how is this really contributing to the enhancements to our micro market microstructure? And how will this proposal benefit our markets? Yeah. You know, coming out of the government's liquidity task force um, towards the end of last year, there was a series of recommendations that were proposed with the aim to reduce transaction costs and then also boost uh, liquidity. Several of the initiatives have already been in, uh, introduced, like the reduction of stamp duty by the government, the new inter enterprise data package introduced by HKX, and most recently, the announcement to maintain trading during uh, severe weather conditions. Um, the proposal to reduce minimum spreads that's you know in consultation right now is the next initiative to further support the reduction of transaction cost. I think when you bring all these initiatives together, um, plus many more that are being developed and planned, um, this will further enhance the vibrancy of our markets and Hong Kong's position as an IFC. Brian, what are your expectations on this proposal and how exactly do you think this will play out? This proposal to reduce the minimum spreads uh, is a way to directly reduce total transaction cost uh, here in the Hong Kong market because the actual bid-ask spread cost is one of the largest components of tra total transaction costs here in Hong Kong. So the ability to reduce the minimum spreads should directly um, reduce the uh, reduce the spreads and therefore uh, support the reduction of total transaction costs here in Hong Kong. Brian, thank you for joining us on this episode. We look forward to receiving market feedback during this consultation process. A friendly reminder to our market participants that they can submit their comments via a questionnaire on our website during the consultation period, which ends, as Brian said, on 20th September 2024. Thank you for tuning into this episode of HKX Voice. Check out our other episodes on our social media channels. And for inf more information on HKEX and our markets, please visit our website at hkex.com.hk. Catch us on the next episode.